Hi guys, it's Andy from Man City Fan TV. How is everybody today? Hope you're well. A little bit early, only because uh, I'm, uh, I've got loads on. Uh, and I wasn't even going to do this vlog, I'll be honest with you. But uh, I haven't been on for a couple of days, so uh, Martin's busy with work. So I just thought I'll do a quick one. Um, this is literally going to be about half an hour because uh, I've got things to do. So I've got meetings and calls and things like that to do. But I hope everybody is well and uh, you're having a good week so far it's friday so most of you i'm assuming quarter to six be finished work or nearly finishing work and uh, i wish you all a happy weekend and i hope you enjoy it so let's quickly go through what we're going to talk about and say hello to everybody so uh, alexander savage is on hello guys happy friday you too mate nonu algerian hello hello guys how are you today good hamza how are you um, been a long week here, had to put up with some shit work. <laughs> no worries, Andy. I think Mares because him last season not did well. We'll come to that. Mares, who'd have guessed? Uh, Mares and Aguero. We're not, we'll, we'll talk about these. Hold back on your uh, your thoughts right now. Uh, Mares this season, uh, Dazzle really because he comes from African Cup of Nations, gains trust. To be fair, does Afcon have to do with anything city related? Uh, told you, let's not get into a discussion just yet. Um, uh, just happy good uh, oh ryan calm down uh evening everyone how are you leonard um but andy loves this chat already <laughs> and aguero and kevin de bruyne it does too hi savage how are you doing kieran's on how are you kieran hello big game on the weekend now how are you feeling feeling good no problems whatsoever about the weekend city player of the year jack rodwell cal's on we know toffee is on anyway um right um, obviously, the title of this uh, particular video, ignore the uh, the roll bar. Um, I was going to do it earlier, then got to... Let me just change that to uh, uh, 17.45, so people who uh, come know that uh, it wasn't 16.40. That's when I was going to do it, and then I had a, a Skype call with, with a client. So uh, this is going to be a quick one, and um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through... Couple of points. Uh, look at Pep's uh, press conference. I haven't had time to watch it. Uh, I've literally come onto this vlog uh, pretty cold. I prepared some things earlier this morning and uh, about player of the season uh, so far. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We'll look through the five nominees and those uh, nominees uh, are my nominees. And I can't think of anyone else you'd want to add, but uh, I've put Fernandinho in there. Uh, I've put uh, Kevin De Bruyne in there. I've put Riyad Mahrez in there. I've put Raheem Sterling in there. Uh, I've put Sergio Aguero uh, in there. Um, have I missed anyone? Never? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Uh, so I've got the three guys up front, Kevin De Bruyne and Fernandinho. Yeah, there you go. We'll look at those in a second. But first off, what I want to do is just very, very quickly just talk through... Uh, Pep's press conference today, I, I said I haven't had time to watch it. Uh, I was just reading through some of the comments and uh, started off with uh, about Lukaku saying players have to take um, players into their own hands on racism and uh, does Pep agree? And he said, not just the players, everyone in schools, in families. Of course, we are public people, especially the players as a group, as a football club or a club. We take a decision and we support them. Uh, Liverpool on course to beat City's record. Uh, Pep said, yep, yeah, uh, it can happen. Uh, records are there to be broken. We broke it when someone said we couldn't. And sooner or later, it will be broken again. History speaks clearly about that. It's not easy to beat Liverpool. Uh, they've found a way to win games. And if you saw the game last night, I watched a little bit of it. Um, certainly the second half. Sorry, I need to know. I'm in for an argument. Um then uh, I thought Wolves were exceptional, uh, but Liverpool found a way, and that's, that's what you need to win titles. Uh, he talked about Laporte's recovery, and he said he played more than 70 minutes in his first game. He played well, uh, but he is not going to solve all the problems that we have. He is one more player, and if we can use him, we will use him. On team selection and changes for the cup, he said it doesn't matter who plays when all of them are fit. The selection is good. The players have the responsibility to try and win the game. It doesn't matter my selection. On winter breaks, uh, he said, 
a few days off and after train again here to prepare for Arsenal. I want the guys to stay with their families and themselves. And in this case, I decided to be here. So he said City will not be going away on a winter break when we've got this couple of weeks coming up. Uh, they're going to stay here with their families and he's staying here as well. Um, says no injury update, no mention of Mendia Stones here. He said except Leroy Sane, everybody is good. So he's not said anything whether Mendy or Stones are unfit. Um, on I think on David Silver, he said it was for tactical reasons. He, he, he rested him the other day. Guardiola, are Ellison and penalty duties. Uh, he said that if he needs to take a penalty, he's going to take it. Um, on Laporte, he said, how does he help you? He said, he's a guy who helps us to do our build-up easier. And when that happens, we lose balls, concede fewer counter-attacks, and that's why we're more stable. Basically, it is that. He's strong in the air, fast, and a special personality. His attributes help us to become a better team. And he said, what problems can he solve? And he said, well, when we played good this season, we didn't need him, so he cannot help us because we were good. Uh, on Garcia and Howard Bellis, any chance of a low move this season for them? He said, Eric Garcia, it is impossible. I think Howard Bellis is going to stay until the end of the season. I don't know if there were any offers from the Premier League. If Howard Bellis had a loan offer, maybe we would consider it for his development. There you go. That's interesting. Um, on fixture congestion, um, he's still not pleased about it. He's, he said, the medics tell us that players need four days to recover 80% of their fitness again. So playing games in two days like it was at Christmas is not good. And that came from Ian Cheeseman, who was at the press conference today. Um, talking about Bernardo pays tribute to David Silva, um, set to leave. He said um, this was about Bernardo. He said he's one of the best midfielders of all time. David might not score that many goals or make many assists, but he brings something different to the team that maybe people don't always realise. The actions before the goals... And he brings so much. Uh, it's a different impact he has on the game and it's huge. And maybe that's one of the reasons he maybe didn't have the praise in the past seasons that he perhaps should have. I will miss him and I'm quite sad that he will leave us because he's a fantastic player and also a really nice guy. He helped me a lot when I first arrived at the club in training and on the pitch. And I like to think I am a lot like him and we are similar in the way we are. All players are different and I cannot compare myself to him because he has won so many things over the years. Yes, we both are technical and left-footed and can play in different positions, but there is only one David Silva. It's a pleasure to play alongside him and learn from him, and I hope I can take some of his game and bring it into mind. So that was uh, that was basically it, and then there was the embargo. So um, that was just a bit from Pep's press conference today. I'll go back to your comments, read a few of them out. Um, let me just see if there's anybody apart from people arguing with each other. Uh, Lazo Gaming, hello, how are you? I'm very good. Uh, Luke Johnson, perfect five, to be honest. Uh, Leonard London, Maris is fitting in six system. He is. Hamza, Raheem Sterling, he was good at the beginning of the season, but this day's lose chances. Um, Carl, I nominate Harlem for our player of the year. Oh, that's Carl and Ryan getting into a bit of debate. Thought this is City's thread, not Liverpool. Or little pool. <laughs> Abdallah statements from the club need to come out where it comes to Pep and Sound's future. I hate uncertainty. Well, it's not going to happen, mate. You have to live with it. Have, um, David, true legend of the match interview. Yes. If you another thing, if you haven't seen it so far, if you go on Man City's website and you have subscribed uh, to the TV channel, um, then I watched it earlier. Uh, I watched it this afternoon and uh, it's 58 minutes long. And it's all about uh, Made in Gran Canaria. And it's all a documentary charting David Silver's rise from when he was a little kid all the way through to the present day at Manchester City. Go and watch it. It's absolutely brilliant. Anything to do with David Silver is phenomenal. Um, so uh, go over and have a watch of it if you haven't blues. But anyway, right, let's get on to it. First things first, before I move into, and like I said, this is going to be a quick one. So we've got about, I don't know, 20 minutes tops. Um but before I do, one thing I was looking at and I heard, I think yesterday morning somewhere, and I was reading up on it and, and I thought, you know, are we doing that bad this season? Are we really doing that bad this season? And I just want to put up something to you. And that is, if I can bring it up, there you go. This is the current Premier League table, as you can see. 
So you can see on here, Liverpool are top with 67 points after 23 games, which is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And Manchester City are on 51 points, okay, after 24 games. Now, if you were to take... If you were to take, remember, we're on 51 points so far this season. If you take the table from last season, after the exact same amount of games, you can see Liverpool are top on 61 points. City are on 56 points. So after 24 games last season, we're only, we were only five points better off than where we are right now. Five points. You know, two losses or a win and two draw, a loss and two draws. We are only five points off where we were at this stage last season after 24 games. The difference being is Liverpool are six points better off, as you can see there. They're on 67 points. Yeah. Where last season at this stage, they were on, and that's, and that is, and that is, playing a game less so potentially they're nine points better off this season from a performance point of view this season to where they were last season we have only five points less this season than we were last season at this stage after 24 games so it goes to show you that liverpool have, have done exceptionally well and you just have to suck it up sometimes and go they've been ultra consistent and again they got away with it last night because um, they got absolutely pummeled by Wolves in the second half, pummeled, uh, and how they missed so many chances, Wolves, I don't know, um, but that's the sign of a, of a Premier League winning team, you, you, you grind out results, even when playing like last night, they were the, by far, by far the worst team uh, against Wolves, uh, but it is what it is, so moving on, there's a little bit of thing. Positivity Blues were only five points worse off as it stands right now than we were in 2019. So, you know, let's, let's not go overboard with it. Liverpool have done exceptionally well. Right, so moving on, we are going to look at our first nominee for Player of the Season. So let's see who we're going to go for. First, we'll start off with this guy. And that is Fernandinho. So what's everybody's thoughts on Fernandinho? Um, I don't know how we're going to do this. Not even thought about it. Do you give him a score, a rating out of 10 for his uh, efforts this season? Um, yeah, let's do that. Give him a rating out of 10 for how you think he's been overall this season. Um, we can't... I mean, I can show you, I can show you his stats. His stats are a bit different to where they were last season. So if I put the stats up here, you can see so far Premier League 20 games, Champions League 5, uh, League Cup 1. So he's played 26 games so far this season. Um, he's not got any assists and he's not got any goals. Uh, he's got eight yellow cards, one red, uh, and he's played a total of 2,268 minutes. Um, but... Uh, how are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? If you had to give him a score out of 10 for this season, how do you think Fernandinho's been? So we'll go for Fernandinho is the first score. You've got literally about 30 seconds, a minute, and then uh, we're moving on. So let's see what you've said about Fernandinho. Um, and the RNG level has sunk in a tad, whereas Liverpool has maintained it, plus VR has helped them. Our injuries didn't help either. Well, when you think we're only five points behind last season's total, and we've had Sane out all season, we've had Laporte out most of the season so far, we've, we've not done too badly. Pep this season made big mistake. No, I don't agree with that. He hasn't made big mistakes. Adela, I read Sky, Twitter, Facebook. No one says that besides Liverpool fans. Alfie Morris, a, f a five. Five for Fernandinho this season. Are you kidding? Blazo Gaming, a six. six, a six. He's been a six this season. Fernandinho. What? Fernandinho's been awful. I know he was out pitching. But, oh, God, you can go. Bye-bye. You're going to be a dit wad. Uh, then Ziad, you can go into a timeout. 
He's been so smart and play and been criminally inconsistent for all he's done out of positions. Eight point uh, seven out of ten. Eight point seven. You can't have an eight point seven. You can have a nine or an eight point five. Uh, doing well at centre back, but not my player of the season. Eight out of ten. Okay, no, he's not saying who should play. We're just asking for, you know, what are your scores for him? Because uh, we have to somehow quantify this uh, or qualify it. Uh, Mervin gives him a seven. Abdallah a six. That's harsh. Don't think he's been incredible, really. I think oh, Ryan, a 6.5. Yeah. He's not a centre-back. We do need one. Yeah, I'm not saying we don't need one. I'm saying how how's he performed in it? And let's face it, out of position as a centre-back. I think he's done brilliant. Done really well adapting to a new position. A seven, six out of position, and has had some shockers this season. Shockers? Don't know what games you're watching. KDB is our best player. We're not talking about that. Vivek, uh, Dami, a seven. Okay, so uh, Ferner gets well. We'll just give him a. We're just going to give Fernandinho a seven uh, as an average score uh, without going into too much detail. Um, I would have given him a, at least a seven, a seven and a half. But hey, it's your scores. Uh, moving on to our next one. Uh, let's go for uh, this guy, Raheem Sterling. Uh, Raheem Sterling so far hasn't had the great, the greatest of the last sort of six, eight weeks. He's been you know, bang, bang out of form. We take a look at uh, Raheem Sterling's stats, though. Premier League, 22 uh, games, 11 goals, two assists. Uh, Champions League, six games, five goals, three assists. League Cup, three games, three goals, one assist. Community Shield, obviously, one game, one goal. So all in all, this season, he's played 2,600 2, minutes, 32 games, 20 goals, six assists um, for Raheem Sterling. So uh, he's not been as great over lately, um, I must admit. But, you know, there's no denying those statistics are still exceptional, which means if you think if he really sort of Played well over the last six weeks. God, what would those stats show? 20 goals in total, six assists. Uh, very, very good. Uh, but I agree, he's probably not been at his best lately. So, um, compared to the rest, our centre-backs, he's much better. Uh, right, moving on. Uh, Sterling, Sig, um, A66, 6.5. Raheem's like our roller coaster. 7 out of 10 for being our top scorer despite recent struggles. Sterling, 7, lost his mojo. He was unstoppable for months, then he was rested and dropped out of form. Needs a cup game to get back scoring form. Solid eight, says Luke. 5.5 started well, but has been off recently. I think 5.5 is a bit harsh, mate. Uh, seven started at nines and has had months and months of fives and sixes. Seven, yeah. Uh, Sig, 6.5. Mark the Blue is seven. Mervyn gives him a seven and a half. Uh, Raheem, for me, again, eight, because when he hits goals, it's very good. But when he played bad, it really messes up. I agree with that. Sterling, a six. Okay. A um, couple of sixes, sevens, seven and a half. Don't want to be too harsh on the man. Had a great season despite recent form, 6.5. Right, Sterling, I think we're going to go for a seven. We're going to go for a seven for Raheem Sterling. Um, keep it in line with what you spoke about with um, Fernandinho. Right, moving through to our next guy, uh, which is... Who should we go for next? We'll go for the past master, uh, and that is uh, Kevin De Bruyne. So we're going to move on to Kevin De Bruyne. Sterling being very poor last few. Yeah, we've said that. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Giving you your top scorer a six. Are we like Newcastle Con? Some people here. Seven and a half, but he was like playing he did. Yeah, we're going to go on and we're going to move on to Kevin De Bruyne. Um, so if we take a look at Kevin De Bruyne's stats so far, uh, let's bring them up. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne so far, 29 games, 7 goals, 18 assists in all competition. He's played 2,370 minutes. Premier League, 23 games, 7 goals, 16 assists. I mean, that's phenomenal. Champions League, Four games, uh, one goal, uh, Community Shield, none, and League Cup, one assist. Uh, but that is that is pretty frightening. That's consistency in the Premier League. 23 games, so he's only missed one. 
Seven goals, 16 assists. Wow. Um, frightening. Uh, so, Kevin O'Brien, let's go back. Leonard London gives him an eight. Sig, uh, an eight. Nippum, a nine. Sig says, really good. Mark the Blue, an eight. Mingyu Wong, an eight. Hamza Sterling must be back in his back his trust to him. Uh, Vivek, 10. It's just impossible for anyone to give 9.9 .9 or less. Lazo gives him a nine. Ryan, eight and a half. Player of the year, but as off games every now and then, which stops a nine. Mervyn, good eight. Alexander, solid eight out of 10. KDB, 100% every game, 8.5. Um, Fully gives him a 9 I mean an 8.5 uh, Is this a quick one? It is, yeah He is the best player in the world this season His passes are mad Without him we'd be battling for third Although he can go quiet in games It takes one KDB moment to change games Spot on Luke Johnson Lanka been amazing Especially coming back from all his injuries from last season But disregarding last season He's been outstanding this season 7.5 KDB is a masterclass Luke gives him a 10 Dylan Wolf and a 9 Right Kevin De Bruyne gets an 8.5. There you go. He gets an 8.5 as a guessing of an average score for Kevin De Bruyne. So let's get rid of Kevin off here. And we will move on to our next one. So our next one we're going to look at is the Algerian Prince which will please lots and lots of people on here. So we're going to look at uh, uh, Riyad Mahrez uh, for our next player to nominee to look at. So if we look at Riyad Mahrez's stats, well, he's played 1,936 minutes. In total, he's played 30 games, so he's played a lot of games. Um, Premier League, he's played 20 games, 7 goals, 9 assists. Champions League, five games, one goal, four assists. EFL Cup, four games, one goal. And the FA Cup, he's played once. So in total, he's played 30 games, which is significantly more than some of the other players. He's got nine goals and he's got 13 assists, which is a great return for Riyad Mahrez um, overall. So... Let's just remove Riyadh's stats from there. Go back to your um, comments and let's see what you've got for Riyadh Mahrez. Uh, KDB should get player of the year. Uh, y, 8.5. Leonard it gives him a 7.5. Hamza gives him an 8.5. Alex a 7.5. Uh, Vivek, when he plays, it's 7.5. Mingyu Wong a 7. 9, best city player of the season. Dylan Wolf in the 10, player of the season for me. Really? <laughs> wow. Mark the Blue a seven, Amin Lorenzo an eight. Uh, Scott Williams is on. Uh, Evening Blues, hope everyone's good. Yeah, hope you're well, Scott. Nippo, um, can we put Kevin De Bruyne in the same conversation as Skulls, Perlo and Ziavi? Yes, we can. Um, fully, uh, Mahrez doing good in Silent's absence. Uh, an eight for me, still room for improvement. Good point. Definitely improvement. improving. He is. Mervyn Thomas a seven, Underforce a nine. Uh, well, a nice match, but Mahrez, why didn't he hit penalty? Is there an answer, please? Uh, yeah, because he only took one for City and missed it in an extremely important game. There's your answer. Mahrez, eight, getting better and better. Looks best on the right. Still greedy at times. Seven and a half. Far too inconsistent, which stops him getting a better rating. He'll go missing for half the game, then do one bit of magic. Eight needs to play five games in a row. David Mack, seven. Nippon, an eight. Lankau, six. Best winger in the world this season, but he doesn't play for Liverpool and Madrid. Best left foot after Messi. <laughs> I don't know about that. Nine. Pack a nine. I'm in an eight. Mahrez must Mahrez must play always. He's a massive skill. See him non. Ten. But consistently, I would give him a six, but for the last four games, it'll be an eight. Yes, Nippo. Um, um, he is okay. He's average at best. He can have a good game, and the next week is absolutely bad. He deserves a ten, says Swizzy. Well, these are your scores, and Riyad Mahrez gets an 8. So, that's Riyad Mahrez, which moves us on to our final nominee, which is this guy, and that is Sergio Aguero. So, Sergio Aguero. Let's just put him up here so you know we are talking about Sergio Aguero now. Let's have a look at Sergio's stats. 
Sergio Aguero so far, I mean, he's only played 1,487 minutes. I mean, that's 500 minutes less than Mahrez. Um, he's only played in total 23 games this season. Uh, he's only played 18 in the Premier League. Yet he's got 16 goals and three assists. I mean, that is just phenomenal. Champions League, three games, two goals. FA Cup, one game, one goal. EFL Cup, one game, two goals. In total, 23 games, 21 goals, three assists. I mean, it's just absolutely frightening. It is, averaging a goal every 71 minutes on his performances so far. And he's only played 1,487 uh, minutes uh, in total this season. Absolutely frightening statistics. Um, so, Sergio, not good having a left foot if you have no right foot. Uh, Leonard London, nine, player of the year. Uh, Vivek, 8.5. I mean, uh, since Pep started using him, he always changed the game. Mingi Wong, a nine. Alex, an eight. Mervyn, a nine. Sig, a seven. Mark the Blue, 8.5. Lezo gives him a 100 million. Ryan, eight. His record is insane, but the injury lists him. And he also has a month or so of absolute nothing. Lankel scores a lot and has quite a spell. Then comes back and scores a lot. An eight. I mean, a 7.5. Well, nice match, but Mahrez did they did apparently loot. If he gets injured, he'd be a top scorer running things at City recently. He's unstoppable in January for his second year in a row. Uh, Sergio, where do you want your statue? Good point. Smashing records. Aguero, love this guy. Best striker I've seen at City, 9.5. Are you the Fulham game of Sunday? Martin is. I'm not, mate. Uh, I'm going away um, early hours Sunday uh, and I'm full on with meetings all weekend. But I will be here to do a live watch along or something like that. I can't take eight hours out of my day on Sunday. Under 4 7, nip on 10, uh, solid 8. Couldn't state, they're always among the best goal scorers. It's got a 9 for goals. Praise me, I don't feel that he frustrates. I don't feel he's pushing himself to the limits. Right, Sergio. Let's have a look. We've got 10s, we've got 9s, we've got 7s, we've got 7.5s. Sergio, that's a 9. That's a 9. Um, 16 goals this season some games not played is incredible also in golden boot this season would you name a stand after Sergio Andy I'd name a stand after any of them David Silva or Sergio Aguero or Vincent Company. any of those three I'd, I'd name a stand after uh, I'd give him a trillion um, Sergio gets a nine uh, as an average score so uh, there you go um, so far Player of the season is Sergio Con Aguero um, as the best player so far this season. Uh, absolutely phenomenal statistics. Uh, incredible when you think, you know, he's played 500 minutes less than Riyad Mahrez and uh, Raheem Sterling. Um, he's played six, I think six, 650 minutes less than Sterling and he's posting figures like that I mean it's, it's absolutely frightening uh, I think Riyad Mahrez runs in a very close second with Kevin De Bruyne very very close I think Kevin De Bruyne has been absolutely phenomenal Fernandinho's done his bit Sterling was great in the first half of the season not so great in the second half in the last sort of six weeks he hasn't been great doesn't mean to say he won't hit form again towards the end of the season um, and come back again and have a wonderful season. I mean, you only have to look at his statistics. I mean, again, if I was to whack these statistics up on the screen just to finish off, um, you only have to look at Sterling's stats there. Like I said, total 32 games, 32 games, 20 goals, six assists, two and a half thousand. Oh, sorry. So he's a thousand minutes more than Aguero. But still, overall, 32 games, 20 goals. That's, that is decent. Decent return for somebody who, in theory, is a winger. KDB stats. <clears throat> Excuse me. 2,300 minutes, so he's played a lot more this season. Um, total, 29 games, 7 goals, 18 assists. 18 assists. And plus, he's added in with 7 goals as well. Phenomenal. Absolutely brilliant. Um, if we look at Riyad Mahrez's stats, done had a brilliant season so far. 30 goals, uh, 30 games. He's played just under 2,000 minutes, 30 games, 9 goals, 13 assists. I mean, over 30 games, that's brilliant for a game, essentially, somebody who is a winger, you know, 
if you put Mares and you put um, Sterling, if you overlay both, you put both of them here. If I take out, look, if you look at Sterling stats, who is essentially a winger, let's face it, 32 games, 20 goals, six assists. You put Mares is next to it, 30 games, nine goals, 13 assists. Very close to Raheem Sterling, who's probably definitely played better in the last six weeks than Sterling has. But when you put those stats up on the screen, 23 games, 21 goals, three assists as a striker in only 1,487 minutes. Frightening. Absolutely frightening. But anyway, I told you it was going to be a quick one. Just wanted to do a quick review, see what you guys thought of who you think has been so far. And they were my five nominees uh, for the season. So let me just quickly read your comments, see if there's anything lasting. City need a legend statue to get rid of the plastic club status. <laughs> Andy, who could you replace cutting your Andy, who could replace cutting your opinion? Nobody. No way Mar is a KDB. Don't be stupid. Uh, no one Leonard, he is a replacement. He is at the moment. Uh up oh, oh, up it till a ten, please. Uh no, gotta be I'd give him a 10, but I have to give it a 9. Alex Nomad, some of you should have stand named after him or Bernard Dow for both legends uh, work at the club. Yeah, maybe I might, some of you stand. I'd be happy with that, Scott. Uh, Aguero for Golden Boot, maybe, we'll see, especially now, you know, Kane's out and Bardi's injured. What's the chances Aguero picks up an injury? Uh, sorry, I meant you up to a 10, please. Uh, shame our defence hasn't been up there this season. It is. Probably Mingi, all his competition is injured. Sergio has been phenomenal this season. He's always phenomenal. With Vardy picking up an injury, then it's a very good possibility. Mingi, Wong, and because of that, he will get player of the season. You are the loser, you idiot. Oh, right, okay. Let's uh, hide the user from there. Don't, don't be talking nonsense. Uh, any thoughts on what the club is doing, putting Pep out in the red hoodie? I don't know. No idea. Uh, will West Ham get relegated? Who knows? Who knows? But they're struggling. Anyway, listen, that's it for today. I've got to go. I've got to get crack on with my work. Um, so, guys, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. I'm sorry it's a quick one. Uh, just wanted to throw the uh, pet presser at you. The fact that, don't forget, City, City are only five points, five points less this season than we were in January last season. It's just that Liverpool... Uh, have been very, very good. Absolutely, you know, superb. And you've got to give it to them. Uh, there's no doubt about it. For whatever reason, whether it's VAR, whether it's City have had injuries, and we have. We've had Sani and uh, Laporte out most of the season. So, um, will we sign anybody? We'll keep you in touch over the coming days, coming week. Um, with regards to Sunday, Martin will be at the game. He'll try and get some footage and things like that, but he's going with his family. Um, I just can't take eight hours of travel, match, post-match, travelling home. I can't take that out of my day. Um, I've got to catch up because I'm going away early hours on Monday morning to Rome. So um, I've got to uh, I've got to catch up with projects I'm working on uh, over the weekend. So uh, I'll try if I can. I don't, I don't know whether I'll be back tomorrow. Maybe Martin will be back tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I'll definitely do my best to do a watch along uh, for the game on Sunday. So uh, keep a lookout. And uh, listen, guys, don't forget, we want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. Uh, absolute superstars. Uh, we're, we're pushing on uh, to that next level now, which is 12,000 subscribers, which is absolutely phenomenal. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy the content that we're putting out on the channel. And uh, listen, take care. If you want to give the video a thumbs up or not entirely up to you but uh, this is Andy from Man City Fan TV we'll be back tomorrow at some point uh, have a wonderful Friday evening have a great weekend if you can't make uh, it coming back on uh, to the channel and uh, we'll be doing we'll be doing things during the week uh, next week um, I might do a couple of live vlogs from maybe even the Coliseum in Rome um, just quickly to check in with people uh, but I'll be back at some point I'll do some quick 10-15 minute vlogging uh, with you guys but take care have a wonderful evening and we'll see you soon